My name is Amal Nergutkar. I'm a CEO of Patient Prism, and I'm uh, delighted here to welcome uh, Fred Joyle uh, from the 800 Dentist fame, from the Becoming Remarkable fame, from Everything is Marketing fame, to really come here and talk about how to build remarkable practices of the future. And, and his book does a phenomenal job. But I think one of the themes that I got from the book was, was trust. You know, how do you build? And he, he says, in order to build a patient-centric practice, um, a remarkable practice, you have to be patient-centric. And what that, and most important element of that is building trust. Absolutely. So, so, so tell, talk to us about trust, Fred. I mean, what, what does it mean? How do you build trust uh, with, with patients that are first looking at you uh, they're not patients yet who are prospective patients. And then once they join, come in the practice, how do you build trust so that you know, everything is optimized? Well, let, let's talk about trust as a concept, trustworthiness as a concept. Because a lot of people think, oh, well, this is, this, I, can, I can create trust by you know, the equipment I have or, or some of the things I, I put out there or, or tell people to trust me. Trustworthiness is incredibly subjective. It's not a fact about you or about anybody. People trust you because they believe certain things about you. People trust me because they believe certain things about me. I don't trust certain people or certain businesses because of the certain things I believe about them. Sure. So it's a belief. So it's subjective. And so you create it by some very subtle things. And sometimes people have irrational drivers about that and they also have their biases and things like that so the challenge is right at the beginning to start to create that trust by how you talk to people and what kind of experience you give them it's how it's your website it's very much that first contact on the phone when they walk in and you and I both know it's how they talk about money with the patient because the patient is praying that this is going to be a zero cost appointment somehow, right. some miraculous <laughs> thing that they don't even need a pro fee. Right. Um, right. And so the challenge is how do you effectively talk to that patient about the care that they need? You have to build the value of dentistry in their mind, but you have to build their trust in you first. And, and it's all about, it. we all know, right, fear and cost are the two biggest impediments for yes. patients, even calling a dentist. And when they have called, uh, if there is any inclination of, of anything, any fear or, or that might be too expensive, instantly they don't want to book that appointment. We see that over two million calls over the last uh, two years at Patient Prism is that even if they have the slightest doubt that they haven't, they cannot trust this place. Yeah. Uh, they're like, they, all of a sudden they, they go back and they, they decide not to book that appointment. Well, and all at 1-800-DENTIST for 30 years, our operators have been trained to create that first impression of the practice. Talk about it and say, this is a great practice. They, they really know how to take care of fearful patients. Uh, we've sent hundreds of people to them who are very happy with the care that they've gotten. We start to build that trust because it's, it's, it's a belief we're trying to build. And, and that, that how you talk about money starts in that phone, first phone conversation. Too many receptionists get to, how are you going to pay for this really early on, <coughs> like before they get their name? It's right. like, so what's your insurance? And can you go get your insurance card? And can you, what's the group number? It's like, uh, I don't even know if I want to come in yet, right? right. And you're already, I'm, you're going to be rooting around my, my insurance cards to figure out how I'm going to pay for it. So it's already turned into, uh, a financial relationship about the practice getting their money instead of the patient getting what they want. And once they have come in the door, let's say you did everything and they've booked the appointment, uh, how important it is for every team member, right, to kind of instill that same level of trust. Yes. Uh, because at the end of the day, you still have, the patient has to accept treatment as well. Yeah, most of the time they've got sticker shock on what good dentistry <coughs> actually costs. And so it's so important for the dentist to, to find out what the patient's interested in doing. I mean, how perfect a set of teeth is that person really looking for? Or do they just want to chew on a regular basis? Um, you have to find that out. And then you have to really say, you don't have to do this today. It's, it's, it's not, you're not going to die, okay? Talk about the Etlid principle that you talk about in your book because it's, it's, it's fascinating of how that that principle applies in every aspect of our lives we think 
Everyone, mm-hmm. we think everyone thinks like we do. That's right. You know, it's and and most people don't. Most people think the, if if just just the <coughs> political environment, we're pretty sure that fifty percent of the people don't agree with us. Right. You know, it's, it's so just use that. But this is how we, we have to understand. Everybody has their own perspective, and if the dentist is saying, "Oh, well, everybody should value dentistry," they should, but they don't. They value other stuff. They value other stuff much higher. Dentistry <coughs> should be one of the most important things they invest in. It's one of the best investments they can make. And when everybody in the practice believes that and communicates that, it makes a huge difference with the patient. When everybody's fanatical about dentistry and the value of it, <coughs> patients start to absorb that. Their appreciation of value goes up to where it should be versus, you know, new TVs and chrome wheels and, and, you know, Las Vegas gambling vacations and stuff like that to something that had as long-term value. So how important it is to, to really get all your team on board? It, yeah, it's, it I mean, it's, it's so important <coughs> for them, for the, for the team to say, make sure this person feels comfortable. One, because people spend more money when they feel comfortable. They trust when they feel more comfortable. Even they trust when the room's the right temperature more. I mean, it's Absolutely. it's so subjective. But it's so important to say to that patient, it's not, a, it, you don't have to do this today. But you have to understand there is no financial or physical advantage of putting off dentistry that you need. It's gonna probably get more expensive and it's gonna probably get more uh, uncomfortable <coughs> to take care of this problem a year from now, two years from now. You're going to lose some tissue, and it's going to it's going to be more work for me. I'm telling you, you should do it now because if you were my brother-in-law, that's what I would be telling you to do. If you were my father, you'd be staying here and getting it done. Okay, but you don't have to do it today. You're not going to die. So we'll talk about it. if you don't want to do it now, or you can't figure out how to afford it now. We have ways of helping you afford it, but if that's not an option for you, we'll talk about it the next time you come in for a cleaning. And all of a sudden it says, you're not, you're not telling me this because you want a new boat. You're telling me this because you care about me. And conveying that, I mean, in my years of experience as, as a CPA, I always told people, you know, the reason why you should hire me is not because I'm going to prepare your tax returns. Yeah. Um, it's because I'm going to inject some common sense financial wisdom that I've learned not only from myself, from all my clients, and I'm gonna help you make good decisions and I'm gonna prevent you from making bad ones. And at the end of the day, it's your decision. I'm not gonna sell you a tax return, I'm gonna sell you my service. And it's a service business, dentistry is a service business, so is all professional services. And we are here to, to really take care of our clients even if it doesn't mean that we that it's against our personal self-interest. And I think it's really important for dentists to really believe that what they're doing is actually adding more value to the patient than themselves. Yeah. And I think it, it, it... And if they feel sold, okay, we have to sell. Okay, I'm, I'm a big proponent of selling because selling is just communication with a purpose. If that communication and purpose is about benefiting that other person, that's a good thing to do, especially if they don't appreciate the value and importance of it. But if they feel sold, that means suddenly they care about money. And so that's that's the foundation of trust is that they care more about you than they care about themselves and their income. That's, that's what they need to feel. This is perfect, actually. It's a great, great point to end on is, is, is building trust is absolutely one of the most critical things to do it, it starts with communication. So thank you, Fred. Thank you, thank you very discussion. much.